Tohar recently got a buff, and I've actually been using him before and after the update, so in this video, I'll share with you the things I've learned so far. What's the best talent build for him? What artifacts should you use? What pets should you use? And, well, let's get right into it. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And Tohar recently got a buff that dramatically changes his power level. Now I maxed him in preparation for a fight and for that buff. I've been using him with Burt, 5551, and the results have been fine, but I would say they are about three-fifths the results that I get from my Lillian Velen. And the reality is that Tohar is a single target damage dealer, and as a single target damage dealer, his damage is fine, but it doesn't match area of effect damage in big fights with area of effect effect damage that is needed. And he does work well for melting down infantry, but generally, well, I don't know. I guess that's a fine thing to do. So his active skill now reads, after launching three normal attacks, Tohar channels skill damage, 500 per second. And this has a cooldown of four seconds. This is very powerful. This makes him play kind of like a mage version of Sindrian. That's the way I would think about Tohar. Because you have to channel this, which means you can't move. So that's a thing. Now, if a hero in Tohar's Legion casts a Rage skill, this cooldown on this ability does end. And then you can do Earth Conduit all over again, which means you can crank the damage if you find times where you stand still. Generally, you do not find those times. They do not exist. Defensive fortifications increase the attack of Tohar's garrisoned army by 20%. While they are garrisoned in a city or stronghold, um, if they have over 50% of units remaining. So when you're strong, you get this extra boost. And magic units in Tohar's Legion deal 30% more hero skill damage, but deal 5% less normal attack damage. Fine. Next up, when Tohar begins channeling Rage of the Plateau, you reduce the counterattack damage you take and you gain defense, which is pretty sweet. Last but not least, after you finish channeling Rage of the Plateau, you gain a keen attack boost of 35% for five seconds. Okay, so this kit points to single target damage. Now, really, it is also pointing to skill damage. Pairing with someone who does hero skill damage is a win. And technically, you could split up Bertrand and Tohar. However, Tohar has a good synergy with Bertrand's compound interest. When you deal hero skill damage, you get a stack of golden mark, which increases your skill damage. So the synergy here is that Tohar starts normal attacking, boom, you start doing skill damage, boom, you start getting stacks of compound interest, and then bam, you hit him with uh, a nice big, well, 1300 damage factor, unless you have it maxed, in which case it's 1500. So with regard to pairings, I think pairing like this is the way to go. Technically, you could split Tohar and Bertrand, I probably wouldn't aspire to do that. It seems like the Lily Velen is a slam dunk, and then the Bert with Tohar is the way to go, and I have been using Tohar Primary. Now, these talents that I've been using were sent over by Does, and then I made a, a few modifications, but there are many ways that you could run your Tohar. I'll talk about what I've been doing, all right? So I, of course, go for the March Speed down in the bottom, and then from there, I took March Speed again. I really feel like getting in and out of combat quickly matters a lot. From here, I took, obviously, bonus skill damage, and then, because we're doing single target stuff, you have to take Magic Maelstrom. You get defense penetration before casting your Rage skill, ignoring the target's defense is is a win. From there, I took less skill damage taken, and when you take skill damage, I have a 50% chance to inflict a defense break on the target. I think these are fine choices. The alternative over here would be to take the damage to infantry, which is not bad, but this one over here, Chant, I really don't want to take more hero skill damage. That seems bad to me, and I don't have shields, so I went over here to Wither, and I find it relatively unexciting. From there, I took Cry Havoc. When the target legion is weak, I deal more skill damage. Big poggers. And then boom, Iconoclasm. When your legion is composed of entirely magic units, you deal 2% more hero skill damage every 10 seconds, every time you gain buff effect, up to 10%. Um, so this is pretty sweet. 2% more hero skill damage for 10 seconds, every time you gain a buff effect. Well, we're going to be gaining a lot of buff effects with this combination. So I think Ic Iconoclasm actually makes a lot of sense here. Um, could instead take Elemental Boost, but I don't think that's where it's at. You could go down the support tree, but I don't think that's where it's at. I don't necessarily think the magic tree on um, Bertrand is the way to go either. I actually really like this build. Now, on the right side of the tree, I'm taking head held high, and I personally chose overall defense to mitigate skill damage taken and normal attack damage taken. You could go for all conquering instead. Uh, and what will I do from here? Uh, I'm not sure when I get to this level. Every time your legion gains a buff effect, their hit points are increased. I gain buff effects pretty fast. That might be it. 
alternatively removes a debuff effect for, from your Legion when they cast a Rage skill. I don't think that's where it's at for me. Um, it actually might be this one. Uh, actually, Force Field might be it. So that's the build on Tohar, Tobro. Now, in terms of artifacts, I think there is an obvious choice, which is that if you wanted what is arguably the most busted artifact in the game, um, I think that Mirage Orb fits the bill. Uh, it is high damage. It's got a stun, and that stun is sort of confusing, the airborne effect, and the damage effect ramps up every time your legion gains a buff effect through a hero skill. Pfft, well, I mean, that's what this combo does, gives itself buff effects. You deal more artifact skill damage, and that number goes way higher than this number. Um, when you actually get to the max tier of this, it's a pretty meaningful boost. So I think Mirage Orb is the obvious jam. However, you see that I'm using Breath of Dragantis because it's what I have. I didn't buy the Mirage Orb this season. I didn't think I'd use Burt Tohar this season. Then they buffed them, and now we're having a different conversation, okay? So I am using it, and Breath of Dragantis obviously has big utility. When enemies clump up, big defense break. This is a magic artifact, obviously. Now, there is one other obvious great choice as an artifact, and that is going to be the Burst Strike from Phoenix Eye. I mean, Phoenix Eye is very easy to understand why it is good. It's just big damage, baby. It's big damage. I don't think I like the Tier of Arbin here, although it does have magic unit defense, but I just am not a fan of the heal effect here. To me, it just feels relatively weak. And I think that covers pretty much all the items I would have considered putting onto a mage, all right? At the epic tier, of course, you've got some choices that you could go with. Not all of those I've actually unlocked yet. There are a couple new ones. Lakeside Rhapsody um, deals diffuse damage, but see, this march doesn't do scorch or freeze or ensnare on the target. So you're actually like primarily looking at those legendaries for good choices or the magic bomb. A, a classic, but goody. The magic bomb still is good. This effect will prevent a march from going into a resource node or city, which the real value from that is that if people are zoomed out, they'll just be confused as to why their march isn't responding to their commands, which is powerful. But on the topic of powerful, let's talk about pets, baby. You can see that I'm using a sapphire. Now, I could have instead gone for the shadow, Fae Drake. And we'll talk about why I didn't. The thing about a Sapphire is it does area of effect damage. And on a March that isn't otherwise getting AoE damage, I like that. I definitely like that, okay? This deals damage to up to one. Hey, wait a minute. Did they change the word on this? Or did they deals damage to up to one Legions? That That's new. What's happening here? I'm gonna have to reach out to support on that one. That's a, that's a head scratcher right there, that is. Huh. Uh, did Sapphire get nerfed in this update? Question mark? We got ourselves a head scratcher. I don't know, but that is not what it used to say. Anyways, uh, I have split pain bloom on this one. Dude, this one, this Sapphire is insane. I went all in. I actually moved in on pets this season. It was like, it was time. It was time to move in and, and follow through on the builds that I said were legit. And I've done that. But anyways... I've gone with this build on this particular Sapphire. I have follow-up, all right? And I went with Elemental Harmony, increasing my crit damage. Um, I went with that instead of going for, pain, uh, what is it, Forceful Pain Bloom, okay? Because this only scales with Scorch, Freeze, and Ensnare, and this Magic Pair doesn't do that. So I went this route instead. I took follow-up, obviously Resonance for extra damage, Magic Fortune for crit rate, and then also crit rate on the... Um, follow up, so ruthless follow up. So this is how I thought I was getting area of effect damage, and now I'm actually just very confused. The alternate pet, which may just be actually just better now, so I'm again a little confused. But okay, well this pet it does less damage, but it has a debuff, and the debuff is pretty good. Honestly, if I had known that this was doing single target damage, I might have picked the shadow instead. I mean, hey, look, we're figuring this out in real time together here, but the Shadow Phaedrake is good because it inflicts this debuff. The problem with the Shadow Phaedrake is that your enemy is going to walk away from you like 90% of the time, and you're just going to be hitting something different. So this is primarily for rally garrison situations, in my opinion, particularly good for defending your city, again, in my opinion. Uh, but given that targets often just disappear by the time this captive debuff lands, 
I just don't think you get much benefit from this damage bonus, but it is relatively high and it might be honestly better than the Sapphire at this point. That is very interesting. Ah, pet skills. Okay, I'm gonna have to review the patch notes to see where they mentioned that this was changing. I don't remember this. But maybe it was in there. Anyways, those are your two choices. If you think you can really jam on a target for a while, then the captive debuff is really good. And given how similar these are now, if this is actually only hitting one target, I actually would steer you toward the shadow. That is not what I was expecting. I low-key regret having built this second sapphire, although presumably at some point I'll have a use for it. But like, I don't know, 6% extra damage for a couple seconds? All it has to do is be a couple normal attacks that might make up for the difference in damage factor here of about 50. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, and they have the exact same intelligence rating. So that makes this comparison very easy. So it's 163.87 to 116. So a little less than 50 damage factor? Like, yeah. I mean, I think you could make that up. I, I think you could. What is it, 47 or so damage factor? Anyways. Um... Shadow is looking good as a pet option here. Now, I've got a full guide for the Shadow Phage Rake, so if you're wondering, how do I build that? Um, I'll have a card in the end screen for my Shadow Phage Rake guide. And for those of you wondering, wait, Chiskul, you haven't covered whether or not this is a great garrison. I think for most cities, it is not a good garrison because the way your city defense will work is going to be based off of what your troop composition is in your city. So most people, unless maybe you're the League of Order and you're stacked on mages, will get more benefit from physical damage. That's what I would expect rather than magic damage, okay? Now I have a lot of troops in the hospital at the moment, but if you were defending a pass, for example, then Tohar can definitely work. In fact, if you wanted to see one such defense, I think this was a double rally, Tobro and Bertrand over here. 109,000 to 146. Nice positive trade. Also um, positive on power. And then over here, 1.4 to 2 mil on the other rally. So like Tobro and Bertrand can work in the garrison. And this, by the way, was before they got buffed. So they've got to be better now, I would assume, right? Um, let's see here. Do I still have the pets that were used? I do. Yeah, Mad Phantom's... Tohar with Bert and this particular pet is pretty is pretty good, man. It, it's doing stuff. All right, look, dude, look at this. Sheesh! The duration of Shadowhunter's captive effect. Yeah, I mean, this pet is just obviously designed for for rally garrison situations for sure. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. Um, I will be making a guide for Bert as well. Between the two of them. I would say generally Bert is probably the better invest because Bert is a pure fielder, whereas Tohar has commitment toward garrisoning. And like that feels pretty obvious, right? And if you wanted to garrison with Tohar, then you're going to just move all in on the garrison tree. And what you'll pick will depend on your situation. Like if you're defending your city, you might choose a little differently. But generally speaking, you're ditching the march speed. You're moving all in on stats and damage. So we'll go over here and we get some hit points. I might take some attack over here. At the next tier, I want to increase my counter attack because if you're getting hit by multiple things, that seems really powerful compared to normal attack, which is only the thing you're directly targeting. Depending on what you're up against, I think that uh, Thorn Barrier to inflict the Gloom debuff is fine. So we can take that from here. Um, let's see, less damage from Surrounded, deals more hero skill damage. That is the play. And then what's interesting is that I don't know how much this garrison cares about rage compared to other things. It's actually a little bit weird. Like, I think you want to generate rage. I think this is still value. So I'm going to go take all that rage gen. And then up at the top, skill inhibition seems pretty good rather than a heal. So I'd probably take that. And then I double back on things like take less damage. And I think things like deal more damage are pretty legit. Also, depending on what you're up against, Taking less normal attack damage can make you very tanky, and you got a couple more points to play with. But, you know, again, what, you're, what you'll do depends on what you're up against and, and what you're garrisoning. If your city was getting surrounded, flank protection would be very good. But this is not a video about defending your city. I've actually made that video. Card will be in the end screen for my video about city defense. If you enjoyed this one, throw a like on here, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.